bless you. Again, my brothers and sisters, welcome to the Simple Truth of God dot com. That's the Simple Truth of God dot com. We will only tell you what thus says the Lord. We're not going to tell you what we believe. We're going to tell you what's coming straight from the Bible. And as we wrap up, my brothers and sisters, um, the final teaching on lust, sex, and marriage. That's number six, lust, sex, and marriage. What we're going to do, again, all our readings will be coming from the New Living Translation. Um, and, uh, but for the first part of it, we're going to look at the New King James Version. So, um, most of the first piece of it, and we'll tell you as we switch one from one Bible version to another, will be coming from the New King James Version, but in the latter part, we'll look at the New Living Translation. Uh, my brothers and sisters, again, the next time you hear us, you're going to hear us live. You'll see a schedule coming out. We're going to look at marriage and divorce. We're going to go into the Bible. We're going to tell you what thus says the Lord. We're not going to give you our opinion. We're going to tell you what thus says the Lord. So I, I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, if you're interested in this subject, to come and join us. And um, so you can get a better understanding of what thus says the Lord as it pertains to marriage and divorce. Today we're going to look at, again, the final version or the final teaching of lust, sex, and marriage. That's lust, sex, and marriage number six. And so, my brothers and sisters, what did we learn? What did we learn from uh, what we saw in the Word of God? We, we look at the New Testament scriptures. We look at uh, David. We look at Solomon. We look at Samson. And they all had uh, uh, one thing in common, and that one thing was lust. You see, my brothers and sisters, one thing is evident, is that I don't care how much you think you're saved is that you're not out of the gunshot of the devil. And so, my brothers and sisters, why, not, why am I teaching lust, sex, and marriage? Why did I pick this subject? Well, I didn't pick this subject. This subject been in my heart for a long time, even since before I got saved, well, just after I got saved. And I wanted to know the truth about this thing, just like I wanted to know the truth about marriage and divorce. What does the Bible say? What, what does the Bible truly say about marriage and divorce? And so you see, my brothers and sisters, the Lord gave me the inkling to go and research this subject. And you'll be surprised what's going to come of this. Because you see, we're going to dig as deep as we can. And we're going to show you what thus says the Lord. Just like I'm showing you what thus says the Lord as it pertains to lust, sex, and marriage. So, what did we learn? What did we learn? We learned that God wants us to have much fun with our wives. In other words, God or Christian, not because you're Christian, it doesn't mean you're a killjoy. You see, a lot of people think that because you're saved, you can't have fun. That's, a, that's the furthest thing from the truth, my brothers and sisters. You see, God wants us to have fun with our companion. He wants us to have fun with our wife. You see, the Bible tells us that, you see, that we must procreate. In other words, God made man and woman, and he charged them to procreate. He charged them to go ahead and multiply. And so, you see, that is still the charge today, my brothers and sisters. But God has a standard. And the standard of God must be followed if we want to be continue, if, if we want to think that we're in His will, and if we want to think that we're godly people. You see, my brothers and sisters, we just can't do anything and everything that we want to do and think that it's okay by God. You see, in, in the New Testament, let me just show you this. In the New Testament, you see in the New Testament, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 through 5, it says that, 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 uh, that the wife... The wife uh, or the husband should not cheat each other uh, or, or prevent each other or stop each other from enjoying one, uh, their one another. In other words, what it says here in Laman's turn in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul said that since sex is, uh, is such an integral part of marriage, the, the spouse always should be sexually available. If the couple refrain from intercourse, the decision should be mutual and should be for a spiritual reason and should be only for a, a stated period of time. In other words, God is not a killjoy. God wants us to have as much fun as we can. And so you see, my brothers and sisters, at one point, not just at one point, but in the Bible, sex or marriage is looked upon as honorable. And so you see, my brothers and sisters, uh, in Hebrew chapter 4, in Hebrew chapter 13, verses 4, it says, Sexual intercourse within marriage was consider, considered to be honorable. What does that mean? It means, my brothers and sisters, that this is something that God understands and God encourages. You see, but it must be done within the bounds of what is supposed to be done. And so you see, that's why there are rules in the Bible of how God tells us how to live. In Proverbs chapter 5, verses 15 to 23, 
In Proverbs chapter 5, verses 15, 23, it says, in verse 15, again, this is coming from the New Living, I mean, this is coming from the New King James Version. It says, drink water from your own cistern and run in water from your own well. Now, this is under the banner of adultery. And verse 19, it says, as a loving deer and a graceful doe, let her breast satisfy you at all times and always be entrapped with her love. In other words, what, what the Word of God is saying here in, Deuteron in Proverbs chapter 5, Verses um, 19, it says, As a loving deer and a graceful doe, let the breast satisfy you at all times, and always being trapped by your love. In other words, if I'm married and I'm doing what God told me to do, if I'm married and I'm uh, and I lusting after 10, 15 women in the street, what the, what the Bible is telling me, that wife that God uh, allowed me to find, is that I should allow her breast to uh, uh, let her love entrap me. And it says, let her breast satisfy you at all times. You see, my brothers and sisters, not because you're Christian, it does not mean that you'll kill joy. In verse 20, it says, it says for why should you, my son, be entrapped by an immoral woman and be embraced in the arms of a, of a seductress? In other words, you see, God wants us to have fun with, with in bounds as it relates to uh, 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 marriage. You see, my brothers and sisters, God has a standard, and the standards that God has is one that we should follow. And if we follow God's standard, my brothers and sisters, we'll be all right. In Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 5, just to show you that God is not a killjoy, or being a Christian is not a killjoy. You see, in Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 5, it says this was one of the, uh, 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 one of the, 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 the law that was given to the children of Israel as they, as they got, get prepared to enter the land of Canaan. It says, when a man take a new wife, he shall not he shall not go out to war or be charged with any business. He shall be free at home for one year and bring happiness to his wife, whom he has taken. In other words, you see, God set up a law uh, in Deuteronomy. You see that for the children of Israel, my brothers and sisters, when they get married, when they get a new wife, my brothers and sisters, or when they got married, that their, their job as a man was to stay home and make sure the wife happy. You see, so you see, God was not a killjoy. Uh, 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 balance of sex in a marriage relationship, is there's nothing wrong with that. You see, my brothers and sisters, a lot of preachers don't want to talk about this. And a lot of people think, hey, man, you know, I don't want to touch a sex in marriage. Oh, no, that's, that, that's wrong. No, it's not. It is right. It's healthy. It's healthy to have a good sexual relationship with your wife. But you see, my brothers and sisters, the Bible warns us that sexual relationship with our wife is acceptable. But sexual immorality outside of our marriage, my brothers and sisters, oh, out of a godly marriage, my brothers and sisters, out of any marriage that's between a man and a woman, my brothers and sisters, is not good. And so that's one of the reasons why God told his people in Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 5. He said, when a man has taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war or be charged with any business. He shall be free at home one year and bring happiness to his wife, to whom he has taken. You see, my brothers and sisters, you see, my brothers and sisters, God is not a killjoy. One thing that we have learned, one thing that we have learned is that from, from, uh, from uh, David, Solomon, and Samson is that my brothers and sisters when when you get carried away by lust great pretend, great man with great potential fall short of what they were supposed to do and there's a lot of us today my brothers and sisters who are great men who will always fall short because of lust sex and marriage you see my brothers and sisters this is not something that I'm thinking of this is not something that I believe this is something what, what thus says the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 2, in Ephesians chapter 2, my brothers and sisters, this is what it says. And it says, this now is from the New King James Version. It says, and, 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 and you he had made alive, who were dead in trespass and sin, in which you once walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now work in the sons of disobedience, among whom you are um, among among whom also we all once conduct ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others.